Hello and welcome to the ProjectWise Administrator Advanced Accreditation Course on Enhanced Environments. This is part one of three-part series for the Dynamic and Triggered Attribute section of the course covering the use and benefits of using these attributes. In this section of the course, we will discuss the advanced technique of configuring standard attributes to dynamically present data based on specific criteria. We will also discuss how to trigger attributes to update their values when other attribute values change. During this course, you will learn what are dynamic attributes, what are triggered attributes, the benefits of using dynamic and triggered attributes, and how to configure attributes to be dynamic and triggered. In this video, you can see how we are using dynamic and triggered attributes to assist the user in data entry. An example of a dynamic attribute is a selection set that is querying another table. In this case, username field is querying the project-wise user accounts. If we enter the value and go to the next attribute, these are considered triggers the username entry triggered the population of the three other attributes. In the document creation wizard, we can see three dynamic attributes already populated the default values. One is for the project number, which is drawing from a work area property called project number. The second is originator. This attribute queries the originator code in the ProjectWise user attribute lookup table that matches the current logged in user. Additionally, the document type is already pre-populated to 3DM for a design model. That is due to the folder description is set to 3DM. Now let's look at some additional triggers. Choosing a role code of drainage provides these options for zone and level. However, if we choose structure engineer, the options change to these choices. This is through both dynamic attribution to query the zone based on the criteria where the role is equal to the selected value, and it is a trigger whenever role changes, the zone options change. So what are dynamic attributes? Dynamic attributes are project-wise environment attributes that are configured to dynamically populate their values and or selectable values based on criteria such as other attribute values, work area or folder properties, system variables, and attributed document lookup tables. So in ProjectWise Administrator, you will create just a standard attribute. There's no option for create a dynamic attribute. That standard attribute is configured to present values based on some variable criteria, which is configured using the select type and the attribute properties. The variable criteria can be system variable values selectable in ProjectWise Administrator, can be data queries, such as a query to the lookup tables created earlier in this course, and can be combined or altered values from other attributes. Here are two examples of a dynamic attribute property selection. In the first example, we are using the select type to set an attribute to the user description system variable for the currently logged in user. So this attribute value will dynamically change depending on who is logged into the system. The second example uses a SQL statement for the select option. We will cover SQL statements in detail in the next video. This SQL statement is dynamically setting the originator code attribute value by querying the ProjectWise user attribute lookup table, which we created in a previous section of this course. The criteria is the username column of the lookup table must match the current user logged into ProjectWise. So what are triggered attributes? Triggered attributes are attributes identified to cause other attributes and values to update when its own value changes. These are heavily used in the workflow rules engine process. There are no limits to the number of triggered attributes used or the number of attributes reacting to the trigger. Triggers occur on attribute updates which may not provide desired results. 
but an advanced technique of chaining triggered attributes can be used to ensure the updates are performed in a specific order. So triggered attributes are standard attributes. They're identified in the update value settings of other attributes. They can be a trigger for one or multiple attributes, and they can be a trigger within a chain of triggered attributes. In this example, the approved by and date attribute values are automatically updated with the current date and time and username when the triggered approved attribute value changes. This is a very common use of triggered attributes during state changes and the workflow rules engine. So what are the benefits for dynamic and triggered attributes? For dynamic attributes, it assists in the automated population of data and reduces user input efforts, ensures consistency in data entry. For triggered attributes, they update previous entered or default values, they refresh selectable value lists based on data entry, and they update attribute values based on event changes. There are two exercises in this course. First, we will convert existing attributes in the My Company environment that are using fixed or no value lists to dynamic value lists using SQL statements querying values created in the lookup table section of this course. Those attributes that we will be modifying are project, which we will select the default value equal to the project number stored in the work area property. We'll update area attribute, replacing the fixed list with a SQL statement that will query the document code attribute lookup table where the filter is roles. We'll update the value list settings for zone and document level attributes with SQL statements. Those SQL statements will select the values in the document code attribute lookup table where filter is equal to zone and levels and the filter 2 is equal to the current role or area selected. We'll change the revision date attribute to select the system variable current date in the update value area. In this exercise, we are using the My Company environment that was created in the Level 1 accreditation course. The first dynamic attribute that we want to create is the project number. Choose the project attribute, go to value, and for the default value, we want to use a system variable, and we want a work area property, and we want to choose the project number. You'll notice there are a number of work area properties, so you want to select the work area type and the work area property desired. Click OK and apply. Next, we want to choose the originator and set it to be dynamic, selecting a select statement and entering the following. This entry is stating that we're going to select the originator code from the user attribute lookup table where the username column in that table is equal to the current logged in user. Click OK. Next, we want to add a selectable value list that is limited to the lookup table for document code attributes that equal originator. So we'll check to limit to the list and choose select. And here we'll enter a SQL statement stating select the PW underscore code and the PW underscore description from the lookup FI table where project-wise filter is equal to originator. This is done in case the current logged in user does not match an entry in the user attributes table. In that case, they can select their own originator code. Click apply and okay. Next, we want to make the area a selectable value list that is from the lookup table versus using a fixed list. So we will change from fix to select and the SQL code will be to select the project-wise code 
and the project-wise description from the document code attributes table where the project-wise filter is equal to roll, which is the same as the area for us. And we're going to order it based on the sort order column in the lookup table. Click OK and apply and OK. For document level, we'll change the value list from its fixed values to a select statement using the SQL query for code and description from the document code attribute lookup table where the filter is equal to level and the filter 2 is also equal to the selected area. Click OK, apply, and OK. Now let's look at the revision date field. Go to value and we want to change the update value to be a system variable and use the current date. Click apply. OK. That completes exercise one. The second exercise is on triggered attributes. We'll set up some triggered attributes in the My Company environment to automatically update default values and value lists where other related attribute values have changed. For revision date attributes, we want the value to update whenever rev changes. For document level and zone attributes, we want their value list to present only data that is relevant to the area or role selected. Now let's go into ProjectWise Administrator and make these changes. For the revision date value, currently the revision date field will update any time any attribute is updated. We want to specify it should only update when the rev attribute is updated. So click on specify attributes to update the triple dots and find the rev attribute. Double click, hit OK, apply, and OK. Now the rev date will only update when the REV attribute has been updated. We mentioned earlier zone and document level is triggered based on the selected area or role. However, you notice the update value field is not adjustable. This is due to the attribute being part of a document code so to filter out the valid selectable entries based on the area or role selected, we use the value list field. It is a type select, and in the SQL statement, we will select the code and description from the document code attributes table where the project-wise filter is zone and the project-wise filter 2 is the area. We do the same for document level in the value list, select, and we're selecting the same SQL statement. However, the filter 1 is level and filter 2 is area. Now we set our dynamic and triggered attributes. Let's test it. Now that we made it to the document code, we can see the project number, originator, and document type has already been selected for us. Now we can choose the role or area, drainage, and based on that selection, zone is limiting to these options. If we choose road, and switch back to Structures Engineer, we see Road is no longer an option. So choose Bridge, and the level is also limited to the specific role chosen. This concludes the first part of the Enhanced Environments for the use of dynamic and triggered attributes. Let's review what has been learned. During this course, you have learned 
What are dynamic attributes? What are triggered attributes? The benefits of using dynamic and triggered attributes and how to configure attributes to be dynamic or triggered. The next part two of three for the ProjectWise Administrator Advanced Accreditation course will be for dynamic and triggered attributes using SQL statements. This section will expand on the advanced techniques for using SQL statements for data query and attributes. Thank you. If you found this video helpful, please give it a like. If you want to see more such series, consider subscribing to our channel. Thank you, and see you next time.